back to royalty soaps. I am participating in the Great Cake Soap Works January Soap Challenge. This month is the Butterfly Swirl, which I did one for Christmas time in the Sugar Plum Fairy, and I really thought it was pretty, and I was going to go ahead for this particular soap I'm making today, which is the Dark Kisses Soap, um, and do that again. So I thought, why not enter the challenge? It's been a long time since I've made soap on camera, so you're gonna have to forgive me if I'm a little bit rusty and stuff, but I will be, of course, sharing some of the techniques that I'm using, and because this is part of the challenge, I'm supposed to kind of be explaining how I'm doing this. Hopefully it all goes according to plan, and I can help you guys out as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Okie dokie, so here is my oils. And here is my coconut milk and lye solution, which is a little thicker, and I'll tell you why, because the coconut milk, whoops, 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 whoopsies, okay, the coconut milk has been sitting in the freezer for a while, and um, when you leave the coconut milk in the freezer for longer than like a week or so, I've noticed that it just gets really thick, and I'm not entirely sure why, I'm sure there's some awesome science before be um, behind that, but I don't exactly know what it is. Now I've tailored this batch to be runny for a long time. I've changed it from my normal recipe because I really wanted to have lots of pour time. So the, here's a gray that I'm going to be using, and here's a pink, and here's the red. So let me tell you what's in each of these. And here is the um, platinum gray, I believe it is. Uh, let me look. Platinum... Yes, the Platinum Gray Mica from Nurture Soap. That's what's in here. And here is the Cosmetic Fluorescent Mica, and that's from TKB Trading. And then in here is half a teaspoon of red, red raspberry um, from TKB. Whoops, that coloring is not from TKB. It is from Nurture Soap Supplies. Sorry about the confusion, but don't worry. I will be linking all of the colorants used in this video down below in the description box. And then also a uh, Red Lake 30. So half a teaspoon of Red Lake 30, half a teaspoon of red raspberry. And now that this has all been mixed up, where is my bowl? Oh. Obviously, y'all wouldn't have known where I set my bowl. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pour this into both of these, and I'm not going to put as much color as I normally do. I'm sure you can see just about this much for two 17-bar loaves, so that isn't very much. And for butterfly swirls, you're not supposed to have just like a heap of color. I've also got a little bit of titanium dioxide just in case I need it. Now I'm going to whiz these up. I'm going to start with the pink, which is this one right here. Very, very vibrant pink. Now I'm going to do the red. Pretty red. I'm actually going to add a little bit, I think, before I mix up that gray. I'm going to add a little bit of this into here. I mean, I wanted vibrant, but I don't know I wanted it that vibrant. And now into the gray, I'm also going to put just a little bit of this white. Perfection. Awesome. These look beautiful. Good grief. Okay, so now it's time for me to put the black oxide into there. And I'm going to have to fetch that. I put all the black pearl I've had into here. We'll see how deep that color is it. If we need some more, then I'll go get some more. The only thing I say is that you need to watch black oxide whenever you put it into things. For some reason, without a doubt, it always seems to accelerate trace, so be careful with the amount you put in. I'm going to not put any fragrance into these because I don't want the color to be uh, messed with at all, but I am going to put fragrance into the big one, of course, and into the big one is going Pink Sugar, and that's by, oh, I can't remember which supplier I have that 
I'm using the pink sugar from. I've tried it from Nature's Garden Candles, really like that. Um, I've tried the equivalent um, in Wholesale Supplies Plus and I like that. Uh, Peak, Peak Candles is the one that I'm actually using this time for the fragrance. Now if you really want to get an awesome and accurate representation of what a butterfly swirl should look like, please go visit the Handmade in Florida soap channel because she does a beautiful job. So I'm going to fill this up about halfway. So that's a lot more than I normally put, you will know if I... Um, actually, I might go ahead and put all the black in there now that I'm thinking about it because I'm trying to think about what happened last time. And I think it might be a good idea to just pour all of this color in there, or most of it at least. So, there's that. Then I'll take my clips off. If you don't have clips for your soap, I highly recommend you getting some. They are lifesavers and have saved me so many batches. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this in here. I'm not gonna scrapey scrapey that yet. I'm gonna take these off. I'm going to bang this down slightly, just a little bit. You can still see my soap's pretty runny. Now, the gray color, I think, is going to be the middle color that I pour. Now, I'll pour the pink first. And I'm just pouring it in to one side. Okay, there it goes on one side. I am pouring pretty high. I missed a tiny bit there, oh well. Okay. Okay. Now I really do feel quite terrible because right in the middle of my filming process my camera shut off and was like which diary your card is full and you know I always look at YouTubers and think to myself what the heck why couldn't you have planned a little bit better and now I'm in the very same state so I'm really sorry about that but at the end of the video I'll show you how I did the butterfly swirl and I'm not gonna lie I don't think it turned out very well the black just like I said a little bit beforehand um, you know thickens up the bottom pretty good and you know I just don't think that the colors went deep enough for this to be very pretty now I've put a small layer of the piping on top I'm trying to put my gloves on here people Sorry! Um, and then here's my piping bag. I have chose an open star tip for this one. You can see that pink is very vibrant. Ugh, I've missed soap making. You go through phases where you're like, I don't want to even look at a bar of soap. And then there will be other times where you're like, please, for goodness sake, somebody whip me up some oil so that I can make soap and then do the dishes for me. <laughs> However, I have a miniature employee who I am training up now this year. My younger sister Shelly um, has been coming in to help me in here Maybe once or twice a week and she has done all of the dishes for me and I can't tell you how much more enjoyable my life is now that I don't have to do those dishes. It seriously is the nicest thing. If some of y'all have an extra handy person about offer them five bucks to help you do your dishes <laughs> it's worth it <laughs> that's the only part of soap making I really just don't like I love all the rest of it I even like measuring out the oils which also can be a really tiresome task if you have a whole bunch to do but I normally even like that it's just those blasted dishes it's the only part the next row that I'm going to pipe, I'm not going to fill up the spaces in between uh, the first row. You'll see, if you do a soap similar to this, that there's always a space left. I mean, this is kind of the case for most piping. There's always a space left between uh, one bar and the next one. There's just really not a piping tip big enough unless you're making your piping really flat and not pulling up 
like you see how I'm pulling up and making them kind of fluffy looking. Uh, if you're, uh, unless you're doing something other than that, there's always going to be a space. So I never fill those up because, you know, these are individual bars that I'm worried about here. Um, not the way the entire loaf looks. Now, if someone was purchasing a loaf for looks, I would fill those in. But I don't when they're being cut into bars. Goody goody, now for the fun part. So the first little bit of glitter I'm putting on here is the Nurture Soap Intergalactic Glitter. And this is like a cool holographic awesome glitter. It's very fine. This is not a chunky glitter. Oh man, it's just dazzling. Woo! So much fun. And then, because there is, you know, black in the soap, I'm going to put some black glitter on here as well. Okay, so it has been thoroughly glittered. <laughs> then I'm going to put some of my chunky glitter on here. Sort of the bigger, flakier glitter. So dazzling. This looks really different. I'll have to show y'all the first time I made the Dark Kisses soap. It didn't look anywhere near as good as this one does. <laughs> and then for the final touch, because there's also red in this soap, I'm going to put some hearts. This is also for Valentine's Day. So the hearts will be a super cute addition, I think. Okay. Man, that is a lot of glittery stuff. <laughs> Okay, so next I'm putting the hearts on. These are just some melt and pour hearts. I made um, kind of the beaded area with the platinum gray mica from Nurtures. And then I made the black part with the black pearl. And then also in the gray part, I also put a little bit of their silver glitter. Just to make it, you know, super duper ridiculous sparkly. And here we go. That's what the Dark Kisses soap looks like. Now, of course, I will be cutting this tomorrow. And we'll see how that, <laughs> how that butterfly swirl did. I have no idea what it's going to look like. But the top sure is pretty and I'm really happy with that. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. We are back now. I have let this sit for about 20 hours and um, you can see this is kind of brown looking. That's because of the discoloration, but hopefully it will go black in a few days. So let's cut this sucker and see how I did. Again, my hopes are not very high, but maybe something pretty will be inside even if it isn't a butterfly swirl. Whoa. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> So yeah, not a butterfly swirl, just like I said, but man, that looks cool. Looks like I'm gonna have to try again for the butterfly swirl, oh well. I have a couple more soaps that I can try to do that on. But at least now I know I'm going to need to use a base fragrance oil that doesn't thicken up at all. It has to be a really, really thin one. It still looks cool in the middle there though. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video of my <clears throat> failed butterfly soap. <laughs> but I still think they look relatively pretty anyway. So, I will see you guys next time and until then, bye for now.